Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to give you praise. We want to give you glory. We want to magnify your name. We want to thank you. Be exalted. Be magnified. Thank you for festival of glory. For everyone whose dark heart was open to the light of salvation, we thank you. For the path that you have secured before them in their walk with you, we thank you. And we ask tonight that you show mercy and exalt yourself. Make for yourself a great name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Amen. Um, choir, the Lord increase your greatness. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, before we start the teaching, I, I, not, I need to make a confession. I'm just waking up now. So, the prayer, I'm supposed to pray to secure the anointing to bless you. I didn't pray that prayer. Yeah, so, you know, I, we, have to, we are becoming old, so we have to tell you the way it is. Just in case you are expecting so many miracles today, yes, I'm not saying that if I have not filled the measure of prayer necessary, that the mercy of God can move. But I'm just telling you that the prayer quota was not fulfilled. May the Lord give you understanding. All right, with that knowledge in, in mind, we can now proceed. The contradiction that I spoke about yesterday, hallelujah, is in the fact that a believer desires to do right, but he finds himself in a state of incapacity where the things he desires to be able to do, he desires to have a robust prayer life, Desires to be able to walk with God. Desires to be able to do great things for God. And he finds an inability to prosecute the things that his heart sustains about the things of God. That is what we call the law of debt or the law of paralysis. This paralysis of which we speak, someone that has a paralytic issue, um, my desire to walk, my desire to stand up from the chair. So the desire is there, but there is an inherent inability to translate this desire into manifestation. That's the law of death. And then the law of sin is that the person wants to stop doing something wants to stop doing something because sin, it gives you an ability in that sin is a power and power is the ability to do work. So when we talk about sin, we're talking about an ability to perform. So someone is in a negative performance. The person is on cigarettes. The person is on pornography. The person is in masturbation. The person is involved in one or two things that are contrary to the nature of God. And according to the word of God, the person has received sufficient illumination to educate that individual that what he or she is involved with is not consistent with the nature of God. And there's an inherent desire to stop doing that thing, but the person finds a contradiction. And the contradiction is that he wants to stop, but he doesn't have the ability to stop. Even though the will has registered it, there is an operation uh, that is at work that is superior to the authority of the will of the individual. So we have two stages of contradiction in this presentation. Having an intention to do right, but not having the ability to do it, and then having an intention to stop wrong and not having the ability to actualize it. Are you still here? Now, so that's the state of someone that is under the power of sin. He, he, he can either be in a situation where he wants to stop wrong 
and he doesn't have the ability to stop it. Or in a situation where he wants to do right, but he doesn't seem to have the ability to perform it. And just in case you have noticed any of these two contradictions in your life, it is suggestive of the fact that you are operating under the influence of sin. Because anytime sin establishes its dominion, then the law of sin, I hope you know what we mean by law, something that is always, almost constant. If the dominion of sin is established, then there is a law. It comes with its law. And that deficiency, that limitation, is going to be a reality that is almost always constant. On Tuesday, you want to break free and you want to stop doing some things, but when the scenario that is suggestive of that thing shows up, you will find out that you do not have the capacity and the ability in yourself to, to prosecute your intention. It is a proof of the fact that the law of sin is at work. And whenever the law of sin is operational, it is suggestive of the fact that sin has made you captive. Now, God is aware of the fact that sin has the intention to make you captive. So he provided a solution for us to live in victory over sin. Are you, are you with me? The Bible is an open book, and the gospel is a simple message. And any true follower of the gospel or any true preacher of the gospel should have loads of testimonies in his own personal life as to how he was able to find victory in the grace of God. I, I am fifth born in my family. And because I have four people that are older than myself, and they have strange abilities to slap, strange. They're equipped with powers of slapping. So I, I devised a technology of survival. It was a survival strategy, and that was lying. And it worked. It worked for a long time until a problem now emerged. I started lying intentionally, and then I got to a point where a lying spirit now came to support my endeavors. You can start, are you, are you following? <laughs> Some people are, are, are depressed because I said I did not pray so much today, so they should not be expecting <laughs> miracles. So they are depressed. Don't worry. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. Don't worry. When the time comes, we will switch the, the service. And I know Jesus. He normally has mercy on me, so be calm. <laughs> now, you can, you can begin a certain line of sin intentionally. Maybe people come to you with cigarettes and they begin to influence you, tell you that, oh, you, you are a Jew guy, you know, in order for you to show that you are, you were born on the right day, you need to, and then you try it out. And then um, the first few months that you are trying to prove that you are a hard guy, yeah, it's just going on like that subsequently and eventually a spirit behind that thing now comes to provide support for you. When that spirit comes to provide support in that venture, even if you decide to stop, your will no longer has the authority to effect any change. Since someone that is going into immorality casually because maybe the people around you are putting pressure on you that you are not yet a guy except you can bring evidence that you have slept with a few ladies. And then you want to prove to them that you are a guy. And then you find a lady somewhere in serious trouble. And then you come and bamboozle the lady and tell a lot of lies and you succeed. The first few times that you go into that practice, it's, it's you doing it. It's, it's, it's your will, you're exercising. 
But it will come to pass if you sustain the activity that the spirit of immorality will now be deployed to give you support. It's just like you are doing something manually and then a, a new technology comes out that can support the manual initiative and make it automatic. So when a spirit is released to provide support for you in that venture, your will no longer has the authority to change anything in that situation. The situation is powered by something that is spiritual. Please help me tell your neighbor, spiritual. And when you are contending with things that are orchestrated from the realm of the spirit, there is no natural initiative you put in place that is going to suffice. And that's why a lot of people come up with New Year resolutions that in 2023, I will stop smoking, I will stop womanizing, I will stop taking bribes, I will stop doing this, and they write it out. Some even go to the extent of typing it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you see, a spirit is involved. That's the problem. It is no longer a decision issue. It is a spiritual issue. And so if it is a spiritual issue, the solution is going to be spiritual. If, it is, if it's still at the decision issue where the guys are trying to compel you to prove your masculinity, if it's still at the decision issue, you can, you can change the course of events by making a decision. But many times than not, it has gone beyond the decision issue. It is now a spiritual issue, and you will need a spiritual approach to arresting the situation. If you are still with me, say Amen. Amen. In order for me to lay out for us very plainly the structure, the spiritual structure of intervention that God has ordained to help us walk in victory over sin, I would like to um, explain two things. Two things that I attempted to explain yesterday, but we did not have sufficient time. Amen. First thing is the flesh. And second thing is the spirit. We spoke yesterday in our presentation that the flesh talks about the fallen nature, the fallen, a consummate description of the fallen nature. And just in case the fallen nature is a very difficult terminology for you to identify with, then I want to break it further. This fallen nature is a nature that rebels against the things of God. All right? Hallelujah. Amen. Now, you know, one of those days, someone came here and saw us praying, and the person ran away from the place. You see, the fallen nature, that was proof of the fact that uh, the person, the fallen nature doesn't like anything that is of God. It's rebellious towards the things of God. And the Bible is saying, are you there? Are you there? In this fallen nature, when God created your soul, your soul is supposed to be neutral, an organ that is set up to amplify and magnify the movements or the realities that are contained in your spirit man. That's what, is, what, that's what the duty of the soul is. Uh, for instance, um, it was Elizabeth that said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. My spirit as rejoiced in the God of my salvation. Now, that, that transmission was received in the spirit, and when the transmission was in the spirit, it was rejoicing. That was what the spirit was sensing. All right? When he moved into the soul, it became magnification. So part of the duty of the soul is to magnify the activities that take place in your spirit man. And in order for the soul to be able to accomplish that, the soul needs to be very neutral. It's a neutral organ. Right? But you see, when man fell, that soul became self. And what I mean by self is that it became self-centered in consciousness. It became self-seeking in consciousness. And that is a distortion of the original arrangement. Are you there? Oh my, you're not following me. You're not following me. I'd like you to understand that the basic 
the basic idea of sin. Sin cannot thrive in a place where there is no self. Because, you see, the, the, the psychology of sin is that it wants to bring gratification to self. Sin believes that self is going to profit from it, and that is the motivation to go for it. Meanwhile, that self-consciousness is one of the implications of the fallen nature. When you see Jesus, and I want to provoke you to take moments to study the life of Jesus, you will notice something about Jesus. Jesus was very selfless. In fact, his consummate um, accomplishment of purpose, which was uh, death on the cross, was a selfless initiative. There was nothing you would gain from all of that sacrifice. So when you begin to walk with God, God begins to make you selfless, which is a departure from the fallen nature, which is a state of being self-centered. Did you get that? Oh, you're not with me. I said, did you get that? Yes, sir. So what the fall did to the soul is that it made itself. What the fall did to the body is that the body became a harbinger, a hideout for desires that have the capacity to draw us away from God. For instance, a man is married and there was so much celebration on his wedding day. And right there in the honeymoon, I, we, we, we've heard such feedback before. Honeymoon, they, play, they traveled far away for honeymoon. It is during that honeymoon that he beheld another lady and ah! And then the marriage, the fracture that led to the eventual divorce of the couple was ignited during the honeymoon. Because there were desires. Your body is a habinga of desires. And sin, being a power that has the tendency to take you away from God, will find the desires of the body as a very powerful platform to relate to it. One of the sort of desires of the body that we spoke about is the desire for sex. It is not, the desire for sex is not negative. It's, like, it's as neutral as sleep. It is, it is when you exercise the desire outside of the commandments of God that it becomes a sin. It means that you have given the desire so much authority that it's no longer subject to the laws of God. Are you there? And I was trying to make you understand that even if you are tired, you with me? If you are tired and you want to go sleep and the Holy Spirit comes to you and whispers and says, can we talk? And you knew. He made the effort so deliberate that you got to a point where you knew that God needed your attention, but because of sleep, you, you, you disobeyed God. In that day, sleep, too, is sin. Because sleep was the excuse you gave. Tiredness was the excuse you gave to disobey God's direct instruction. So as neutral as, that's how sex is. Sleep, too, can be a reason for disobeying God. And in that scenario, that sleep that day was seen. Because the Bible says that he that knoweth what to do and doeth it not, to him, you see, it's idiosyncratic, it's particular to him, that act that led to his rebelling against God's direct order is recorded as sin. So any of the appetites can be used as a platform for sin. Are you there? to compel rebellion. And I told you that sin is a power. Sin administers the ability to do. And what sin will move you to do is contrary to the laws of God. So, in order for sin to find expression, or the platform upon which sin finds expression is called flesh, the fallen nature. It takes advantage of that fallen nature and the psychology of the fallen nature is, is poised in such a way that it has the capacity to take us away from God. All right? 
um, one of my mentors was trying to give me a very simple working definition of the nature of things. That if we want to know the nature of things, this is the litmus test that we need to subject the things to. The litmus test is, does it bring us toward God or does it take us away from God? Are you there? If you want to analyze something, that's your relationship that you just started. Is it enhancing your work with God or is it taking you away from God? If it is taking you away from God, it is a platform that sin will use to compromise your work with God. You get that? So the Bible reveals that sin is domiciled in the flesh. Sin thrives in the fallen nature. That's where sin is domiciled. All right? If there is any loose end in your makeup that is not ultimately under the authority of God, that will be a powerful operating system for this power called sin. It will interest you to know that for the whole of time, as vast as time is from the perspective of humanity, for the whole of time, God is preoccupied with one assignment and one assignment only for the whole of time. What God is preoccupied with achieving during the course of time is to bring everything under the authority of the administration of Christ. See, anything that is not under the full scope swing of the government of God becomes, <laughs> it becomes a loose end that can facilitate the agenda of this power called sin. Second thing I want to raise here quickly before we go into a few scriptures is that this platform called flesh, all right, platform called flesh is first of all uh, the organ that indwells, that sin indwells, okay? And this platform called flesh is also the talmac that Satan lands when he wants to begin an activity in your life. It's, it's a talmac. It's, a, it's an entry point to Satan. So Satan needs the flesh in order for him to find relevance around your life. Are you there? And if you decide to operate according to the movements of sin, which is the desires of the flesh, the lusts of the flesh, once you yield to the movements of sin, what you produce in that intercourse is what we call Adam. The personality that comes out of your yielding to the movements of sin is Adam. Adam the fallen. Adam the rebel. That's the personality that finds expression when you yield to the intercourse of the promptings of sin. Then on the other hand, we have the spirit. The spirit is the infrastructure that God walks through, just like the flesh is the infrastructure that Satan walks through, and sin is in the flesh. Are you there? And if you yield to the motions of sin, you produce a personality called what? Adam. Don't forget that. Oh, you're not with me. I don't want to take you to Romans chapter 5. That's where I got all I'm explaining. My explanation is easier to understand than Romans chapter 5, if you read it. My explanation is a researched projection of Romans chapter 5. Second thing that is written there is this. The spirit is an infrastructure that God can move through. You must have read scriptures like God is spirit, and they that worship him was worship him, what? In spirit and in truth. Now, the meaning of that scripture is that only spirit can contact spirit. Your mind cannot contact the spirit realm. It is only your spirit that is calibrated with the capacity to contact the spirit realm. Are you there? All right. So sin is in the flesh. And the flesh is the infrastructure that Satan needs to operate in your life. And if you yield to the flesh, you produce Adam. Is that correct? 
All right. Then grace is in the spirit. In the same way sin is in the flesh, grace is in what? The spirit. And the spirit is a platform that God can operate with. And if you yield to the spirit, you produce Christ. So there are two personalities that are seeking serious opportunities to be expressed through your vessel. And because of how complex we are as regenerated Christians, you have the capacity to express Adam. You also have the capacity to express Christ. When you yield to the Spirit, you yield to God, then you can access grace. And when you begin to walk by grace, your results that you will achieve will be in the same likeness of the results that Jesus achieved. For the Bible says that he was tempted in every way as mortal man, but he was without sin. Because he was operating by the Spirit consistently, his life was a seamless manifestation of a life of victory. In his own ecosystem, he lived as though sin did not exist. And that is the destiny of every believer. As vicious as sin is, there are systems that have been put in place that will ensure that you can walk on the strength of a law that is superior to the law of sin and death. And in that ecosystem, it will be from victory to victory, and you will not even know that sin exists. Are you there? All right. With, after all of these explanations, then we can take a scripture. And the scripture will be Romans chapter 8, beginning from verse number 1. Romans chapter 8, that is our first, first text for the night. Romans chapter 8, beginning from verse number 1. You see, I, I wish I had days, days to teach you on grace. Grace. You don't need to be qualified for anything in order for that thing to happen to you. If you know how to walk in grace. Hallelujah. Mommy Budu, your women that cooked for us during the crusade, are they all present here today? No. Okay, so when we are doing cooking for my birthday, because I was tired, then we'll, we'll pray for all of them, please. The, the, the appointment you gave, I was tired. I could not meet with the appointment. All right, Romans chapter 8, verse number one. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. There are three requirements that this scripture reveals concerning living beyond the reach of condemnation. Are you there? How many of you can still visualize the, the weapons of our warfare mentally? Can you visualize it? The shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, can you, the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation. Can you visualize it? Now, let me show you something quickly. The Bible says that there is now, therefore, no condemnation. And I need to explain to us today the difference between accusation and condemnation. Accusation is from the devil. Condemnation is from God. God is condemning something. I remember when, the, when we were building this building, I rebuked somebody. And then when I left the place, the great one was not happy. So he condemned 
my approach. So I came back and I called the person and I apologized. And then the great one inside of me became excited. Now, so God is a righteous God. And anytime you operate contrary to his nature, he will send you a signal, a signal of his displeasure. In fact, that is a blessing that God can still register his displeasure is a proof that you are still spiritually healthy. If God gives up on you, part of the first blessings you will miss is the ability for him to register his displeasure about some things that you are doing that is not comfortable with. He will just leave you. You have come to a point where your heart has become reprobate. And that means you are going, you are going headlong into darkness without any form of barricade, no bump on the way. It is that kind of living that can make a man cross the line of grace and lose his salvation. You know, I told you yesterday that the only thing that is not captured in Scripture is how much of sin you will sin before you lose your salvation. But the fact that you can lose your salvation is, is clear in Scripture. And I told you that there are 80 Scriptures that are suggestive of the fact that you can lose your salvation. 80 in the New Testament, not in the Old. 80 Scriptures in the New Testament. And that is a researched opinion. And one of the 80 scriptures is that God threatened that he will blot out some people's name from the book of life. And nothing can be that clear. Once your name is blotted out of the book of life, you are no longer in the community of them that are living by the life of God. You there? All right, so. God comes to register his displeasure in your heart that a particular activity that you have carried out is contrary to his nature. And when God gives you that act of mercy, if you still have any virtue of sincerity left in you, you are supposed to respond by repentance. And you sustain the repentance until it is evident that the Lord has accepted your offering of repentance. Should I come again to you? Should I come to you? Amen? Don't joke with issues of restoration. The, the, the mentors that taught me the things of God are people that know God. And they said, when you offend God, are you, are you with me? Do not. It's just like when I offend my wife because we offend each other very much. What I'm looking for is not for her to tell me, okay, okay, it's over. That's not what I'm looking for because she can say that and still be caught by what I've done. Are you with me? How did you know that God was displeased? He, he, he registered his displeasure and it was an experience. Is that true? It is possible for you to say, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hmm? And then you now come to God and say, forgive me. And the reason why he's doing that is because the Bible says, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So he just comes and says, forgive me, thank you. Then he goes. <laughs> now, there is a temptation. For those of us that have training in the area of the faith movement are likely to operate like this. <laughs> this is wrong. Because the way you even knew that God was offended was his displeasure. It was organic. It was experiential. The people that taught me said, stay in that repentance until you know in an organic sense that God has. Do you get that? 
Yes. So sometimes I can be repenting about a matter for two days. A faith preacher will just come and say, have mercy, thank you, and he walks away. He ignores the organic dimension of this matter. So he doesn't care how God feels. He doesn't care if God is still hot. So he's saying that you cannot be hot because the scripture says you don't know how to deal with persons. You don't know, you have not yet understood God as a person. Yes, so I stay in repentance until I feel that warmth of the spirit's pleasure again invade my inner man. Hallelujah. You are not with me. I, have been, I was on the pulpit and I was explaining something and... Um, I, yeah, I was explaining something on the pulpit. And I think I gave something like an exaggerated estimation of what I was describing. And the Holy Ghost stopped me quickly. That it just, I, I lost my IP. So I knelt down on the pulpit. Oh, people may not understand. They say, Kai is high in spirit. No, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm working on something. So I knelt down there and I said, ah, oh, okay. So me and him now settled. And I knelt down for a long time. So when I, and then when I stood up, you will not believe that when he was angry, the anointing lifted. So I knew that there was no need to continue that presentation because there was no support from him. So I had to stay there and plead and plead and plead and plead. I led the congregation to pray. I said, it's time to pray, it's time to pray. So they thought that maybe the, an angel, I discerned an angel. No, I was trying to make up with God. And then when the sense of peace now flooded my heart again. I stood up and the anointing that night was so powerful. So, always know that God is a person. And the, the Bible is a guideline of possibilities. But when you are relating with God, know you are relating with a person that can be hot. And if you are trying to uh, uh, advance a reconciliatory move, ensure that the person, the organic dimensions suggest that God is appeased. That is how to work with God. So the Bible says, and now there is therefore no condemnation for them who are in Christ Jesus. And there are three ways that you can achieve this seamless, no condemnation possibility. First of all, you need to be in Christ Jesus. Glory to God, if I'm not mistaken, everybody here is in Christ Jesus. Is there anybody here that has not yet giving his heart to Jesus Christ, please indicate quietly so that we can ensure that the entire lecture fulfills all the requirements. Anybody? You have not handed over your life to Jesus Christ. All right, so we have the right audience here. So first of all, you need to be in Christ Jesus. And then secondly, you must not walk after the flesh. I told you that if you walk after the flesh, what you will produce is what? Adam. So we need to close the door to Adam. That means every time the flesh is making an advance and seeking you to grant permission so that he can find expression through your vessel, you shut the door to Adam. So the devil is going to make a lot of advances toward you. And it doesn't matter what spiritual level you are operating in, the flesh is mingled with your reality. And the reason why God did not operate the flesh away is because he's introducing a law that is superior to the law of sin and death. And even if the flesh is there, if you operate by this law that has been made available by the grace of God, you can still operate in victory. But the flesh is as much a reality to you as the spirit is. But you see, you will need to consent to allow the flesh expression or you need to consent to allow the spirit expression. Your ability to give your consent determines which program runs in your life. And that's why at this point, choice, choice is man's most important power. Most of you have read my book. In the kingdom, 
Choice is your most important power. The choice to shut down the flesh and to walk after the spirit is a grand choice that every believer is faced with making every single day. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Every single day. So this is what you do. You shut down the flesh and you subscribe to the spirit. Now, you know, are you, are you with me? Are you, are you here? All right. So we have seen in, in this, our lecture, the grand title is the part of spiritual progress. And we have seen that the first item of the part of spiritual progress is you must have an accurate position with respect to sin. The second item on the part of spiritual progress is called yield. Can you tell your neighbor, yield? Now that we know that grace is in the spirit, then we must learn how to yield to the spirit so that the spirit can always have expression through our lives. I want to say this quickly before we move on, that as you are learning how to work with God, you will make mistakes. You will insult, you will move in the flesh sometimes and insult people's grandfather. When you notice you have done that, repent. And if possible, go back to the people and restitute. You see, the reason why we are saying go back and reconcile is because the more you reconcile, you are working against the flesh. And it will be more difficult for you to do that kind of thing next time. If you put yourself under pressure to go back and reconcile. And for, for, for me, are you with me? I don't allow the sun to go down in reconciling. I'm not too big that I cannot retrace my steps. I'm not too big. The, the one that is too big is God. And if you want to walk with God, uh, the Holy Ghost is going to assume that you are not too big. Except you are actually too big. <laughs> so, so once and again, the Holy Spirit will ask you to go back and reconcile. And when you do that, you will enter into victories of grace. It will be very difficult for you to err on the same point again. So we are learning how to walk with the Spirit. We are not on the same level. So the seamless way in which we coordinate ourselves in the spirit will be on different levels. But get this from me, just in case you find that you were overwhelmed by the flesh and you operated by the flesh. When you have sought restitution, you have sought forgiveness from God through repentance. If someone is offended by that action, labor to go there and reconcile. Even your act of reconciling can become an open gate of salvation to that person that you went to meet. Are you with me? So now, we are in Christ Jesus and we need to walk after the Spirit. Walking after the Spirit begins with the big word, yielding, yielding to the Spirit. Because grace is in the Spirit. And if we walk by grace, we are living the life of Christ. And you will notice that the believers were first called Christians in Antioch because they were living like Christ. And so the people in the community called them little Christs. The reason was because there was a personality whose reality was held up in grace. And as long as they engaged grace, it was that personality that was evident and it was obvious that it was Christ that they lived out. That's what Christianity is. Christianity becomes visible when we begin to walk by grace, and then Christ becomes visible. Even the most notorious unbeliever will be able to recognize the life of Christ because it's something that the flesh cannot produce, and eventually they will come close to you to ask you questions. Ah, are you doing what you are doing? Why didn't you revenge why didn't you shout back? The Spirit of Christ will begin to find expression through your vessel. Now, I need to tell you a few things before I tell you how the protocol to access grace, which is the method for victory. 
I need to also teach you the doctrine of yielding. So come with me quickly. I'll use 15 minutes to talk about yielding. Then I'll use another 15 minutes to talk about the step-by-step -step procedure into the pool of the grace of God. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. Okay. Can we do Romans chapter 6? Maybe we'll begin from verse 18. I'll show you something quickly. Romans 6, 18. It says, being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. Remember that there is no vacuum in the spirit. There is no vacuum in the spirit. Sin wants to make you its servant, right? If you are free from sin, your destiny of servitude is still in place. You may not know, but we were designed to be agents of service. So you are either serving sin or you are serving righteousness. So if you are free from sin, there is no neutral zone. You need to become a slave of righteousness. I'm just trying to build the consciousness that you should work with. I have only one orientation now in the New Testament, and my orientation is that I am a slave of righteousness. I have no other job description. And everyone under the sound of my voice, just in case you are a beautiful lady, your beauty is not, is not an object of marketing for immorality. In fact, your beauty can become an attraction for evangelism. As people like the product, and then navigate in your direction for strange reasons. You become, the beauty is a bus stop, it's a prison, it's a chamber through which impact is made. Because you are now a servant of righteousness. So that's your description according to this new arrangement. Please help me tell your neighbor, I am a servant of righteousness. That's the first thing I want to bring to your notice. Okay. So, um, verse 19. Quickly. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants, to uncleanliness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, this was what we used to be, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. So the goal, are you there? The goal of righteous living is that we become creatures that are altogether separated unto God and only God operates us. The goal of righteous living, and it will, it will, it will interest you to know that our new nature, our new nature, is the nature of righteousness. That's how we are constituted by the life of God that we received on the strength of our redemption. So can you tell your neighbor again, righteousness is your new nature. And holiness is your new lifestyle. So when you see the word holiness, we are talking about the lifestyle of the believer because his destiny, his design is that he be separated unto God. But now that he knows that he is a slave of righteousness, then the goal of holy living can now be achieved. Are you there? Okay. Verse 20. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Had ye then in those things wherefore, whereof ye are now ashamed, for the end of those things is death. So if a man walks according to, this, to sin, the goal of sin 
is to bring you to a point of death. Either spiritual death, damnation, anything, death of grace, death of health, death of all kinds of death. So the goal of sin is death. And I can show you in scripture where death is not an event, but death is a process. And I can also show you in scripture where death is a goal. It's a goal. Okay? So the goal of sin is to bring us into the economy of death in all its shades and all its colors. But now being made free from sin, ye became servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end of a holy life is what? It's everlasting life. Don't, don't forget that. The end of holy living is what? Everlasting life. And so that's, the, that's, that's what I want to draw your attention to. There is a very big picture that is connected to uh, the presentation that we are making, and God is calling us to holy living because once holy living is in view, then we are on route, life eternal. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. So now uh, let's go further in Romans, into Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 2 is an explanation of the provisions that we have in verse 1. He said, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now, so the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has a law. And I define the law to be something that is almost always constant. So if it is constant, it means it is dependable. We can depend on it. We can bank on it because it is constant. It's always constant. Now, the Bible is saying that the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus is superior to the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death, if it's operational in the life of a believer, is proof of the fact that an aspect of the believer's life is under the control of sin. But you see, the law of the spirit of life is superior to the law of sin and death. It means that God is calling us to operate according to the law of the spirit of life. And if we operate in the law of the spirit of life, we will be over and above the law of sin and death. Temptations will come, but it will not produce what Satan expected. Trials will come, but it will not produce what Satan expected because we are operating with a law that is superior to the law of sin and the law of death. Are you still here? Are you with me? Hallelujah. All right. So my job this night is to explain to us what exactly is the law of the spirit of life. And it will interest you to know that this law is only obtainable in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life. I gave an example yesterday that we have the law of gravity. And the proof of the law of gravity is that if I let my handkerchief down, it always comes down. There's no time that it floats in the air. It means there is something responsible for its downward motion. And that was discovered by scientists to be the law of gravity. And then we said that there is a law of lift. The law of lift is what the airplanes use. Buoyancy and lift is what the airplanes use. And the airplanes, hallelujah, the law of lift does not undo the law of gravity. It's just that it is superior to gravity. It can operate in spite of the presence of gravity. So, um, sin is, doesn't need to be taken out of your vessel. It's just that you hook up to another law and it looks as if sin doesn't exist in your per perimeter. It is a higher law that you have engaged. Even though there is sin in the environment, there is sin around, you can step on sin and go without being contaminated. This is the life of victory that Jesus calls us to live. And all of this is hinged on the faithfulness of a spiritual law, which the Bible calls the law of the spirit of life. Hallelujah. 
Okay, as I try to round up, I need to show you how to um, engage the law. Verse 3. I'll stop in verse 4, and then I will show you how to unlock grace. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. You know the meaning of this? The law came and the law produced God's perspective, God's standard, God's expectation from us. But unfortunately, under the old covenant, uh, the law was spiritual, but the people unto whom the law was written were carnal. They were not born again. They did not have grace. They were fallen men and there was no way they could fulfill the demands of the law. So the law could not produce righteousness in itself. The law could not produce rectitude, moral rectitude. The law could not produce integrity. The law could not produce or command compliance. Now, if you go to, to theological school, you see a lot of Bible arguments from left and right, and that's what a theological school is all about anyway. So you find it's a set of theologians. Uh, no, let me forget about I don't want to educate you about some people's negative thinking. But because the theological school is a, is a space, a scholarly space, so a lot of scholarly allowances are, are accepted. All right? So uh, some scholars have brought great arguments that the, the way we knew we were sold under sin was because the law came and showed us our infirmity. We didn't have the consciousness of sin before until the Lord showed up. Are you there? Uh, you know, I told you the purpose of the law. The law was designed to show us, first of all, that we are guilty. It's a parameter that revealed our state of being guilty under God. And the reason why we were guilty was because we didn't have the ability to, to uh, um, fulfill compliance to the requirements of the law. And then the second purpose of the law is to make, remove the possibility of boasting from humanity. See, when you are guilty, you try to do it, you cannot do it, you will not boast again. So if God decides to bring an, a way out, every human being will, will line up on that way because there is no other way to achieve um, the expectation uh, in view. All right. So, so he said the law could not, what the law could not do, the law could not produce compliance, could not produce um, integrity, couldn't furnish righteousness. Uh, it was weak because of the flesh. The problem was not the law. The law was righteous, but the problem was us. We did not have the ability to fulfill what the law was revealing, so the law became an object of condemnation uh, so that we will not boast and we will be humble enough to accept God's solution. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. You see, what Jesus did is that um, he bore sin. He bore sin on the cross. There was judgment against on sin. There was judgment on sin on the cross because the reason for which the father turned his face from Jesus was because Jesus became sin. He took on that rebellion of sin on himself on the cross and dealt with it. It is because he dealt with it that grace became a power that is superior to the oppression of sin today. So this is the legal framework of our liberty that Apostle Paul is attempting to unveil to us that sin was dealt with, sin was condemned on the cross. So legally, sin, uh, 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 being condemned on the cross, paved the way for us to enter into that life that is sustained by a law that is higher than the law of sin and the law of death. Number four, Verse number four, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. You see, there was a righteousness that the law spoke about, but the law did not have the ability to furnish because the law could not give life. The difference between the law and grace is that in grace, there is the impartation of life. Grace operates by the zoe of God, by the life of God. 
See, but the law could not give life. The law could only show the value system of heaven. And there was a limitation with that entire framework. So God had to orchestrate a new system. And that is what we call the system of grace. All of the victories of the New Testament are tied to the powers and the possibilities that abound in the grace of God. The Bible says that righteousness that the Lord spoke about is now possible for us to walk in that righteousness. Such believers that do not walk after the flesh, but walk after the, faith, the spirit. Now, I think one of the words here that I need to use it, the lexicon to unveil is the word walk, walk. Are you with me? Walk after the flesh. Where are we? We're in Romans. Romans chapter 8, verse number 4. Okay. Walk. If you have a strong uh, exhaustive concordance, you'll find it on pilot number G4043. And if you click on it, you will find the source of the use of this word. And uh, it actually means, uh, oh, he has a few words here. One is to be occupied with. Another is lifestyle, lifestyle, okay? Now, so if we say we are walking after the flesh, the implication of walking after the flesh is going to impact our, our lifestyle. If we say that we are going to walk after the Spirit, it's going to impact upon our lifestyle. Have you heard people that say Christianity is only is of the heart? They lie. The reason is because of the use of that word walk. If you are an accurate Christian, it will be revealed in your lifestyle. The, the litmus test of your Christian life is your lifestyle. That's the check that you bring out that you are in compliance. So there's nothing like if you are a Christian, it is in your heart, it is hidden in your heart, only God knows the heart, so nobody should judge you. There's a lifestyle component. In fact, the Bible says that the moment you become a preacher, a preacher, it means you number among the elders. Before you can become a pulpit minister, you must number among the elders first. Because every pulpit minister was first, or is first an elder, and indeed is still an elder. And when we say eldership in the body of Christ, we are talking about people that can be saddled with the responsibility of oversight. And if you are going to oversee souls, you are going to be in the way, in the face of people that you are leading to God's estate in heaven, you are going to be in their face. The Bible reveals that an elder must be what? Blameless. Blameless. You will discover that the requirements for eldership, in the requirements for eldership, you will not find anointing requirements. You will find character requirements. Just go and study your Bible. So that idea that Christianity is um, of the heart, that's, that's one of the wisdoms that came from the flesh to endorse compromise. Going by the Greek word that was used for walk here. Walk. Now, this is what I want you to know. The flesh has motions. The flesh has desires. If the flesh is making an advance at you, it throws desires at you. It throws lusts at you. Then, it seeks to intensify the validity of these desires and to make you captive to them so that you don't see any way out other than yielding to the desires and exploring their adventure. The Spirit of God also has promptings. The entry point into the things of the Spirit is through movements of the Spirit, which is a form of promptings 
impressions. Are you there? So as the flesh is, uh, you must understand that the flesh is more violent than the spirit in terms of invitation. The spirit is gentle. The impressions are so gentle and they stand to be despised. But the flesh is so violent and when it registers an impression on you, it's so tough, so tough that you cannot cast it away by just changing your channel and getting preoccupied with something else. It will still stand in your face. That thing you want to do to distract yourself, it will come there and it will consume your attention. But the Bible says that it's only when we walk in the Spirit that we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. So I need to show us quickly how to access grace. Meanwhile, whenever you see, you notice that you are incapable, maybe a lady is disturbing you, and you, you notice, even though you are resisting her, but you notice you cannot resist for long, the way she is determined. You know, I told you that if you lose your virtue of sincerity, you will not be an accurate Christian. You are resisting the lady. She's, she's making an attempt, telling you what she wants, and you are resisting her. But you know that you, you, inside of you, you may not last in this, your resistance. So it is a proof. Anytime you find insufficiency, you find incapacity, you find infirmity, it is suggestive of the fact that you are short of grace. And grace is a currency through which you live out the Christian life. You know, I told you the other day that um, they approved our stamp, that we'll be using stamp at the office. And if you stamp once, you get 10,000. All the trucks that they brought into the depot. No, not trucks. The paper. They dispatched 600 trucks from Lagos to come to Makodi. They diverted 320 and sold in places where they will get more money, where they will inflate the prices. And then they now bring the paper to you to endorse that it came to Makodi. Anyone you stamp is 10,000. Those days, I don't know about now. If you stamp one, it's 10,000. So 10,000 times 320 that they diverted, that's how much? 3,200,000 in one month. So when they approved that we should be using stamps, I knew that I would steal money. Yes, inside me I knew that if I have stamp, I will build a, a mansion. So I went to, oh, it means I was short of grace. I went to God to plead for him to give me the grace to stand strong and to reject this thing continually. I was in dry fasting when God released the grace. Until I left that place, I never took a dime to endorse any... Gabi Todo, yes, he, he can bear me with. Never took a dime to endorse any document that came there illegally. We, our, our, our data capture only captured trucks that we saw with our eyes. And we did that for four years. We were ostracized. We were cut off from the community. They say we are, we are strange people. We are looking for her too. Just a few set of people against the entire community. And we made that impression there because there was grace. The source of grace, according to the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, is a throne and administration. Hebrews 4, 16. It said, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. There's a need for you to do something, but there's no grace for you to get it done. And you are seeing your weakness. You are seeing your incapacity. 
you have not been able to find enough courage to tell that lady, no! Anytime she comes, you will be rehearsing. You will be rehearsing how you talk to her and tell her, no, no, no. I said, when she comes, I will stand like this and say, no! Then the moment she comes, you can see every other word except no. It is a proof of insufficiency. That means there is no, no grace. And the source of grace is a throne. A throne from whence an invitation is extended to every one of us in this place. Let us therefore come, what? Bold. That was why when I came to the pulpit, I confessed to you that the throne where I go to fetch grace to come and minister signs and wonders, I did not visit there. So let your expectation not be too high because I was not in that location. And I believe when I said, yeah, you know, we need to be saying the truth. And I believe when I said that God heard me and he had mercy. So the anointing just came. That's why I'm, I'm saying that the anointing came. <laughs> I assure you, 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 you have no power of your own. And the earlier you know that, the sooner you become a candidate for the grace of God. He said, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. And even though it is it, it is called the throne of grace, huh? in order for you to access the grace that is available around that throne, you need to obtain mercy first. That means, that means the ritual of accessing grace is that you plead for God's mercy. It's only those that have obtained mercy that can find grace. So when I am going for a meeting or, you know, coming to stand before you, I go to him, I begin to ask him for mercy. I start in the morning. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. See how wretched I am. If I stand before them, what will I tell them? Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. And then when God makes mercy available, you will secure that grace. Are you confronted with a situation and you know that you do not have the capacity to stand for long? Can you go before him and say, Lord, have mercy on me and supply the grace that is needed for me to step into victory concerning this matter. It's only those that have obtained mercy that find grace. And when you find grace, it will become evident because grace is the ingredient that opens the door into the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Suddenly you will see a strength beyond your human strength to resist iniquity. You will see an ability beyond your human ability to say no to, to darkness. No. No. And people will look at you and say, oh, he's a disciplined man. They won't know that your secret is that you found grace. It is not of him that will it. It is not of him that run it. It is of God. You might see him running and say he's such a great runner. No. He's not in the running. Yes, you saw performance. But the secret behind the performance was that one, somewhere along the line, he obtained mercy. It is that mercy that gave him access to the grace that is playing out supernaturally around his life. Will you come boldly to that throne this night? The occupant of that throne happens to be Jesus Christ. He's the one that sits in the throne that administers grace. There is an office in the spirit that administers grace. And the, your entry into this office space will require boldness. And the reason why you can be bold is because he paid the price. He paid the price on your behalf in order for God to proclaim you righteous. 
You are bold because from the verdict of the Father, who happens to be the judge of all, you were proclaimed righteous on the account of his sacrifice. So you don't come there with inferiority. You don't come to that throne with condemnation. You come right there with boldness. I come to seek your mercy. Oh God. Sakuria Barakanteli. So condemnation comes from God when you, you, you violate his nature. But accusation comes from the devil. Hallelujah. Accusation comes from who? From the devil. Please don't, don't, don't mix the two. Condemnation. God will register his displeasure. Accusation comes from the devil. Where he, he, he raises something. Maybe you have gone to God and obtained mercy on a certain fault that you made many years ago. And then suddenly the devil resurrects it. And he resurrects that, the memory of that fault in order for him to plunge you into depression, plunge you into becoming, uh, operating in a pity party. When you deal with a matter before God, it no longer exists before him. So when the devil comes to raise that matter, rebuke him. Kai, this was a family matter that was solved long ago. And you are not, a, you are not in the family. So what? How, how? Yeah. You cut it out. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. For you, my master, I choose to be holy. Set apart for you, my master. I'm ready to do your I choose to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. <laughs> I choose to be. Is I to bury man telling no coberasi? Ruska feta monde babarakadi anze zole. Marasku petamen. Shabria la babons ke tese se silo mokoria. Zabros ke tobija ni kobrante. Mabriko balabon jame. Eskufi la mesia katebonda mama mahaid. Rasko beba mino salimondeli. Yakuria babarando seminantelia. Ante brosketa barato sketo brenda mamusa hiko bela mandeli. Abro minasiko breva la baba babaya. Ready to do your will. And I choose to be. I choose to be. la baboria. Mara sacande lo bresco filande. Abaitos samandale. Abaitos combe. Abaitos licabaratase combre cadali mantalia. Eso se la brisco fela monda. Kondele boboria kasemi, akanta la soselaito. Ready to do your will. One more time, make that declaration. I choose to be holy. Set apart for you. And I choose to be holy. I am 
set apart for you. Ready to do your will. One more time, I'd like you to declare again, I choose to be. It's a choice. It's a choice I make tonight. It's a choice I make. Before I begin to minister to the congregation, I want us to pray. There are such sins that easily trap us. And every believer knows the sins that can easily trap him or her. Can we ask that the Lord will give us grace against those sins? These are the days of blazing holiness. And the Lord is meaning to restore the glory of his church in this day. Issues concerning sin must be visited at this time. Yasante Kobira Kazelia Branteme. Bosket of Rigo Varanda Bina Zebria La Babosket and Haitale. La Bromena Cantelis of Olmina Isla. A Cabela Bonde Seketando Combrisa Valata Mina Cantelli. Diego Santoria. Diego Semina La Brosqueta. Abres Covelanto. Abres Samina Cadia. Abre mena conta, abre santelia, abre scomina, abre samalaita, abre samalaita, abre samalaita, abra samalaita, akabanda babonda, akabala basanta, akabala basanta, ikabala basanta, abre scobilaita, abra tesile, abra cantale, abra cusa mantale bonde, eco semina cadelia. Eko Samantha Unde, Yakaba Baratalia, Abraske Tonde, Asimanta Laboda, Abranta Bakuda, Ezoze Naitete, Abrema Siga, Abalaito, Esuma Deli, Ekabe Laito, Esaminando, Ekebresko Fela, Ikobande Zamande, Ikabresko Fila Mantalia, Akande Babonde, Asama Kuria Bahade Bosige. Oh Lord. Briase Kobilan Toria. In the name of Jesus. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Now, the first thing we need to lay aside are weights. Anything that puts pressure on your life in terms of your commitment to God is a weight. A relationship can be a weight. Bribe money can be a weight. It can make your heart heavy. Are there things, conviction, a deep conviction, a deep conviction that comes out of an, of an understanding of the expectation of God a deep conviction, a deep conviction, a deep conviction. He said, let us lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight and any sin that so 
easily besets us. Can you lay the weights aside right now? Thank you, Lord. We lay them aside. We lay them aside. We lay them aside. I saconde berekadia santeli. Oria caparada masukle braskedia. Ruben asiko presko filamena kante breke de la zubria la babode. Anta la babara katabara sata branda baboria. Gemini ton seca banda. Raka batala babonde. Ya do si compresco falante, i cobase sali, raketambre su filando, a cabarata basanta baboria, a skeminan seli, a skeminan cantele, a canta babo de sala, a canta basia lato, ebras keda bonda, ebras cantele, ebras sabalata, ebra caparadalia, e suminatele, e canta baboria, a sima seli bonde, Ante Boroske, Ante Boroske, Ante Boroske, Asama Selimante, Icaparata Babaleto, Ezobina Cadelia, Ambria Cascabe, Asose Laminde, Yalebo Secaya, Yatabonda, Yataskeli Bondelia, Alama Mamamasu, Akaita Parata Babonda. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory. Yala be a sicko. Rico Santa da Barbaracada. Prasatalia. Endoria Capre Sico Barato Si. E Prasketop in Acanda Babolia. A Presco Felante. Elante Babonde. Elante Basaka Tala Babonde. Oh, we give you praise. In the name. Of Jesus. All right. I have like 15 minutes to minister. 15 minutes to minister. Can you tell God what you want Him to do in a moment? Just, just whisper to Him. This is, this is my desire. This is my desire. I table it before you. Uh, can you be merciful? Oh my God. You are not the way you are praying. I don't know if you will attract His attention. Siamo sekilande. Samala baratoske. Inko baratalia sebinande keskote. Imbresko filante baboria. Habarante kaskute manzali. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We exalt your name. We magnify your name. Parasco se salimande. Parasco se soprendo. Abranta baboli bacadia. Gemina ito compelami. Esopria la babote cascataya. Abrasquento se masila halabonde. Yatosqueto meso si. Abranta basubarato. Encomenantalia. Asavena cosquetama. Raca batala babonde. Ieco samanda. Yeko Seminaila, Amprekaskute Barakanda. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory. In the name of Jesus. I see an arrow. An arrow being shot. A very bright arrow being shot from a bow. And I began to ask God. What is the meaning of this sign? And he told me that there is someone in our midst that is going to shoot out. A, a, a someone is going to release you into your mission field. And the mission field that I'm talking about is not around Benue. It's going to take you away from Benue State to a mission field. To a mission field. A mission field. So the, 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 the reason why he brought you into this service is so that he can empower you because he's going to send you out. He's going to release you out. And as I'm speaking, the anointing is already coming on the people implicated by this utterance. It's coming on the people, coming on the people implicated. So ushers, when you begin to see them, when you see those people, 
you bring them to me because I, I, I have words to speak over their life. The anointing is already descending on the people. It's descending already 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 on the people. He will move you out. He will move you out. Because he wants to shoot you like an arrow. And grace is coming upon you. He has set you low bond the Babaraka Tala. Resso si cobrande catalito cobria. Misco pande heleke deli no cobriasi. Thank you, Lord. Ia Baba Masia la habarakata. In the name of Jesus. The Lord shows me a sign. It shows me a sign. Ooh, Jesus. It shows me a powerful sign in the spirit. And the sign points to yesterday. Yesterday night. There's somebody here. You had an encounter with God yesterday night. In form of a very clear dream. You had an encounter with God yesterday night in form of a very clear dream. You have not been able to fully decipher the meaning of that dream. Uh, he, he, he wants me to, oh my, he wants me to meet you. Someone yesterday, you had an encounter, very clear dream that you had from God yesterday night. If you are the one, please come. My Kosila Maraka Debo. Isam Antoria Barakos Kito. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Let me, oh my God, let me tell you something quickly. When new seasons open, I see angels with chauffeurs blowing it. And I can tell you with authority that a new season has opened. And in this season, Jesus wants to glorify himself. And so he's beginning to encounter people afresh. Oh my God. He's selecting a new set of people, promoting people, encountering people afresh. So that's what is happening to you. See, I feel an anointing dropping on my head. It means that he wants to anoint those people that he encountered. So, about uh, the hand of God will uh, be stretched forth. He will begin to anoint and empower. He will begin to anoint and empower. He will begin to anoint and empower. Anointing, oh my God, even in the congregation, even in the congregation, there will be anointing and empowerment. Anointing and empowerment. Anointing and empowerment. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Anointing empowerment. Anointing empowerment. Empowerment. In the name of Jesus. Zaike boko belaki so barata minteli.
Let new things begin in the name of Jesus. Let unprecedented things begin in your life in the name of Jesus. 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 the spirit for two minutes for two minutes there's there's something I'm seeing but it's not clear yes Titus come there's something I'm seeing it's not clear Sai Kela Boranasi Laski Tobela Kuria Barakatama Sheko Sika Bande Kadula Matele Jesus Natia Tambo Rokose Abraske Tobila Cantelia Baranasiko. Oh! Hey! Psycho Bilala Masia Lando. Shaminai Contella. Shekatanda Babo de Gassi. Abraske Tomina Gassi. Abraskanta Baboria. Escuvina Gassi. Amante tokebo saliata, excuse nagasi, akelo me sonde, alia kindo, abande luseka dia, ekuli nagasi, abresko fadane kanteli mondale. Hey! Kufelamina asakola, abresko felamina gadia. Asinde le mo konde, abrande skuva, abrande babalatalia, e kandola, e kan samantele, e kan seliate, e kan sodama, e kan zamina kodia, e zasika tande, e kabalata kanda babolia, abrasketa manda, abrasketa koria, abrasketa. Abrasketa, Abrasketa, Asimantalia, Akabatatona, Akabashanda, Aitakonda, Ebrasia Tambe, Abelabo, Abelabo. Hey! Kuriala Sukedalia, Allah, la, 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 la. Alla la 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 la, alla la 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 la. Esa bala, esa bala, brata baba la tala, akanda la baboria. Oh, we give you praise. In the name of Jesus. And I be heard in the spirit. And I saw an angel of the Lord high into the heavens, sent from above. And for the past 12 days, this angel has been visiting a woman. And the woman is not aware. But in the next 17 seconds, the angel will come again to that woman. And you will receive grace in a moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
30, 40, 50, 60. Yabo Selina Kendo Makanderia. He says unto you, I open the door for you. I open the door for you. I open the door for you. And it shall not be short. It shall not be short. It will not be short. It will not be short. For I open the door. I open the door. And it shall not be so. Isse mokoria barakande. Sai kombeni masiku. Selikede. This is the reason for which he appeared unto you. To strengthen your hands so that you can become his messenger in your family. Yes, he puts an anointing upon you. Grace on your vessel. Grace on your vessel. Grace on your vessel. Grace. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see, I see in the spirit. I see. There's a family, a, a certain family represented here tonight. It has been concluded that a human sacrifice must be performed before the end of 2022. That is the reason why you have been having strange dreams, terrible attacks. Tonight, God wants to uproot that plan. You were chosen, you were selected to be the sacrifice. I know you will not believe, but in a moment of time, the hand of God will come upon you. Father, show me that one that has been selected by the anointing, by the anointing, by the anointing, by the anointing, by the anointing. Concerning your children. Oh my God. 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 Yes, do Korea. Asabo Kompela Menatale. Yato Seko Bariataba. Branteso. Esaminaita. Akanda Baboria. Ezumena Katala. Abrakaita Kombe, Yete Kedia, 
Abezo Zanante, Abranta Babode Caselia. Oria la 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 la. Oria Sama, Oria Cantelia, Oria Curia, Oria Sila, Oria Calaba, Oria Calaba. Jenny <laughs> Sika, brate tu a capela mina sande, ya tata basanda baboy, paraseki, paraseki, mai tato mela kambala, ika besote, akaita komba, malaboria. In the name of Jesus. I see someone here, you are wearing an invisible cap. You are wearing an invisible cap. There is a destiny that evil men want you to fulfill for the devil. You are wearing an evil cap. It is God's will for that cap to be removed. Now listen, listen. No, no, you people can go. Who are these people? Listen to me. There's a serious matter here now. There's a very, very serious matter here. Someone has been given a meal by Satan. Satan is demanding the soul of that one. Oh. Yabo kaminale. Psycho seli mohondela. Oh, he demands his soul. Raise him up. You were sold for naught. And you shall be bought with that money. Bring him, bring him. I disallow you access to his soul. I destroy your contract with him. For he never consented to the darkness that you want to bring upon him. I separate him from you. And I break the yoke that he carries. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone is wearing a cap, a cap, a cap. You have been crowned. You have been crowned to undertake a task. A task. Oh my God. Oh my God. Just keep him somewhere. Keep him. Don't worry. Keep him somewhere. The contract will not work. So like I said, someone has been crowned to undertake a task for Satan. You may be aware, you may not be aware, but the angel of the Lord will pass through the congregation. And you'll be touched by that angel. The moment I can identify who the person is, then we will pray as a congregation and remove that satanic ordination from your life and my assignment will be accomplished here tonight. Father, in the name of precious Jesus, 
that one that has been crowned with a strange ordination from the kingdom of darkness. Can you keep quiet? Can you? I didn't say pray. Just keep quiet. Keep quiet. How do you know you are the one? Yeah. So, um, sorry. Okay. Uh, Tony, give him the microphone. I see the crown. Let's hear his story, and then we'll know if he's the one. Yeah? It was a um, few months ago. A few my, months ago? Yes, in my dream. In your dreams? Yes, I encountered a cup. Written, you what? I encountered a cup. A cup? Yes, from the, this thing. It came from the heavens? Yes. So, um, it was, when it, it was, it was just like a Jew. Um, I don't know. When it came, it formed a white cap, this office, a M cap, yeah, a yeah. Image, written so many things on it. So from that time, I discovered that thing. when I woke up, I sensed so many things changed. And things had changed yes, those when you had um, that situation. Okay, you are number one. We want to, we don't want to accept that maybe it's just one person. It can be two, three. So you stand there. Father, in the name of Jesus. Okay, we have another one. Where is Pastor Tony? Have you gone on leave? Let's find out for him. Yes? How do you know you are, you are wearing a cap? I go to Islam from a family of a Native doctors. Okay. So when my father died, why, why did you say by God's grace? You are, by God's grace, you are from a family of so native this, doctors. How I'm, I'm how sorry. has the, what has the grace of God got to do with? I'm sorry. Oh, my casimo kelamo carobosito. It's a sleep of. All right. Yes. Yeah, so what happened? So since then. I am somebody that they want to put on that. Okay, place. they want to put on that place. Yes. Okay, I okay. That's number two. Me. That's number two. Yeah? So if you know you have been selected for satanic ordination, that is what I'm talking about. Maybe there's an altar. You were the one chosen to drive the altar. All right. We are going to remove it from you. And if your life is slow till today, it will become fast. Yeah, find out from that system what is. Praise God. I've known that, that since um, I came to Adulam. I'm, a, I'm a S Adulam student. For eight months, I'll be under attack of a spirit. My mom served the deity. So the deity was haunting my life. But I should come and serve her. And uh, not very long, they began to show me things about the kingdom of darkness. If I agree to serve, what they will give to me, and the the things that I will receive if I accept to serve it. Most of the time, they will lock me inside. If the torment come, it will be affecting my brain and my mind. Then sometimes my body will be moving as if I'm a subject. Check up, yeah, find out. You know, every every meeting you minister in as a preacher, there is one thing God wants to achieve. May you know this. And if you finish preaching without achieving that one thing, you didn't preach. Sometimes God is merciful. He shows us before we come out. Sometimes he doesn't. Then he just leads us as we. But make sure you achieve that thing. If, if for a long time you are not achieving what God wants to, you to achieve in meetings, your, the grace will begin to deplete. You will plateau. You will not be able to grow into higher levels of grace. Yes? Uh, in my dreams, I see my late grandfather okay. holding me by the hand that we are going to church. Going to he's church. taking me to a place like a shrine. He's taking you to the shrine. Yes, and there is a store there, empty. So most of the time when he comes, he's showing me that seat. He's showing you that. Okay, yeah. there's a stool that is empty. Yeah. That and he's stool. showing you that seat. Showing me that seat. That you are the chosen one. Okay. Um, five 
how I know is that, you know, um, my father is an adolescent, and he used to tell me things that I should, you know, practice tradition, and, you know, it, it started when I had accident about three times, 2019, okay. that was when I came here the first time at the They took tent. you to the village? Yeah, I had that then when I went to the village. Then my father said that it was uh, uh, Azor, Obanji, and... Okay, the evil Ahatu. spirit. The evil spirit is punishing you for not yeah. submitting. Yes, and okay. from then... Things Did you submit? No, sir. You submitted small? No, I didn't, sir. Okay, great. I told my father that if it is because of that, then he don't have answer to my problem, so I left. No worry, we'll remove that cap. I'm hearing something. Can you help me? Help me. If you speak in tongues, are we here? Are we here where? Are we here where? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do you know? Do you know that there's someone in this meeting that is in custody of of charms that they gave him or her? Someone in this meeting. Charm. Now, if you own up, if you admit, I will help you. But if you don't admit, it's your problem. Someone is still in possession of charms, satanic items. If you accept, I will help you. If you accept, I will help you. If you refuse to accept, I will shut up. Okay, obviously you have refused to accept. I give you another chance. If you accept, I will help you. You are in possession of the devil's property. So, come, come here. What's your story? My name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yes, sir. I go in Manuel OHO. I'm, yeah. from, I'm from Benue State. Okay. And, um, my local government is Okpoku. Okpoku? Yes. Okay. From Ichama. Ichama? Yeah. I go as a clan. Okay. Yes. So when I was coming. Hey, Tono, do you know this place he is calling? You know Ichama? Okay. Go on. So, uh, when I was coming up, I was like, I made this decision that if I grew up, I'll become a superstar. A yeah, superstar, like a native doctor? No, or... A musician. Okay, a musician. Oh! Yes, yes, sir. So when I expressed myself to my family members, some of them, they were, they were at my back, and some of them refused to... To help you. To, to help me. Okay. So it was when I traveled to Abuja, and my cousin's sister got a job for me. So I started managing with the job. So along the line, they still sacked me out. For no reason, and I know I didn't do it any of them, anything, but they still sack me out. After sacking me out, my pay off salary, I went, uh, I went and used it to do my two tracks at Abuja. Are you in custody of Satan's property? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So how, how, what happened? How did you? Because when you wanted, that, when you did your two tracks, then you went to the devil to collect his property to help promote it? No, sir. And uh -huh. what no. is the? The, the, the danger that I'm inside is that my people are saying that I'm insane, I'm mad, I'm, I'm mad, I don't know no, what no, I'm no, saying. No, 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 you are not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about somebody that is in custody of Satan's property, like charm. Do you have charms? Uh -huh, okay. Huh? Itodo. Uh, let him speak the Dhamma to you. The, the Dhamma from Okwaku. Um, if you own up, I will help. Okay? I swallow a stone, okay. seven stones, when I was told to be a leader of uh, Mazop, uh, IP, IPOB members in my community. They gave you seven stones? Yes, I swallowed it. You, oh, you, okay, you swallowed it? Yes. Okay. 
So you, go. Any of those ministers sit there, sit there. Because you are following me to my office. So you are, if you have it, did you come with a Bible? Go and collect it and sit down. Yes, one woman here wanted to talk. Okay, finally. Um, Quickly, Pastor Tony, don't like waste. My, uh, my mother's ancestry, is, um, they served water spirits. They served water the spirit spirits. The spirit has appeared to me and told me that, did, it, have I not, did I not see how wealthy they were? So what is the wealth? Where, are the wealth? Where is the wealth in my life? I know that since I refused to follow after, to follow the, after spirit. the spirit. That lady seems to have something to say. Finally, before we begin to pray. Oh, shh. The Lord is so interested in all of you. So interested. Oh my God. Okay, so uh -huh. about six, five months ago, I had a dream that in the dream there was a meeting. My father was involved, sat together in a meeting, a round meeting. Okay. And then it was as though he was involved. He had entered some agreements. So he was supposed to, they were giving sacrifices of people, like their children. So when it got to his time, he had agreed that I was the one he was going to give. As a sacrifice. As okay. a sacrifice. But he was pleading that they should let him give someone else. And they were like, those were not the terms they had agreed. So they were trying to, he was trying to beg them to shift grounds. But they said, this was what has been happening. So he was not going to be able to um, give someone else. else and then I you? overheard and then I was running. Then I woke up. Then a month, less than a month, my dad's sister died. Okay. Find out from that, the choir lady, okay? Um, since last week, though it's not the first time, it has been happening for years. But on Tuesday, I saw one of them in the dream, dressed on red. On Wednesday, they still came in the night in the dream. Okay. On okay. Thursday, they still came in the dream. Then on Saturday, they came in mass and they told me it's an occult group. The hand of God is already on me to do damage to these matters. Come. Kneel down here. Now, I want to invite the congregation to pray for the... Oh, Jesus Christ. Ah. Seliko Mahai. Stretch your hands and cry for these ones. Cry! Cry. 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 Cry for them. Ia semine kebobori alam. Eskufeta bekude. Mando berakaska somena ilam. Asamantala babo de God. Seli compesade. Asai compeli. Samon de lekedi. Amaya konda. Jose Mateli. Amoski adokonde. Maya casa. Ilambros capelaina. Rade cose cadale. Rase cande. Iyama moketa, hari aki asope, eskope lakida, iskantalia, iskantalia, yeto seka bakute makandeli. Iso celebre skofilamina. In the name of Jesus. Seta, these ones have come to take refuge before the Lord Jesus Christ. And before, because they have come to take refuge, I demand that you let them go. Amen. The hand of God will come on two of you mightily. I demand. Let them go. 
The hand of God will come on two of you. Two of you, mighty. You are going to be snatched. You'll be snatched from where you were kept. You'll be snatched out of that entanglement. The hand of the Holy Ghost will come upon you. So mighty, so mightily, so mighty. I snatch you out in the name of Jesus Christ. I forbid that these demonic appearances will continue. We put an end to the transaction. In the name of Jesus. We put an end to the transaction. In the name of Jesus. Every property of yours that was taken into the water as a point of contact that disconnect you from that property. Come out of where you were kept. Come out of hiding in the name of Jesus. Come out of hiding. Come out of hiding. Come out of hiding. Out of hiding. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of hiding in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord gives you a new life. He gives you a new grace. It changes your story. In the name of Jesus. Let the yoke break. Amen. That which was taken from you is hereby restored. So you will prosper from today. The things that were impossible for you will become possible. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes, you can go back to your seat. Those symptoms we see. Where's the lady from the choir? Come, come, come up here. sold for naught and you shall be bought without money. That which was taken from you we demand is restoration. Psychopelima Santeli Psychopres to Falamane Shekilato Broko Bokoria Babarante that which was taken from you, I command it to be restored to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the yoke breaks from off your life. Grace. Finally, before I sit down, I can see a grave. A grave. A grave has been made. A grave has been made. Lord, that one whose grave has been made, stretch forth your hand. Show me by power from my left hand side to my right hand side that one whose grave has been made show me by power 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 so bring that person you don't come to the house of God to die
you come to the house of God to live. No debt is allowed here. No debt is allowed here. No debt is allowed here. Bring the person to me. We cancel it. Whenever the year is about to come to an end, there are so many transactions. Oh! Safri de Bokoria. Mantekuria Bahasali. Those of you online that indicated that you were chosen to fulfill a satanic ordination, I cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't come to the house of God to die. You don't come here to die. Search among us tonight and search online whose graves have already been made. Father, Father, trace them in this congregation. Trace them online. Let the covenant break. Let the arrangement be destroyed. Holy Ghost. Kubelai Kopali Samanteli. I refuse the burial in the name of Jesus Christ. I refuse that barrier. Oh. Ilamo Moseli Brokote Balakaya. The last time I checked, Satan never created anybody. So he cannot be saying the truth if he said this one belongs to us. This one belongs to us. Ikamo <laughs> Konde. Can you raise her? Let me touch her head. Nobody dies in the house of God. Nobody dies here. I bring you life. I bring you life. I bring you life. I bring you life. I remove death from you. I bring you life. 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 Life in the name of Jesus. Life in the name of Jesus. As the year is about to come to an end, you will not be a victim of any plan. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. I see the heavens open. Oh, my God. The, oh. I proclaim to you that next year will be better for you than it is this year. I see doors opening. Satan is arrested. Satan is arrested. Satan is arrested. Satan is arrested. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Can you say a prayer before we shut down? Pray, secure your family. Secure your children. Secure your brothers. Secure your sisters. Secure your parents. I can sama kuria barakasemi. Because it's a lebron. Agabe siya can tell ya. Mante kobilama. Shai komparasi kobrasketa bandeli. Alanana mama soketale. Oria kesime. Presko felama. Isai to kombe. Ikatama taladada kasala. Gobre satola. Gobre mene kantele. Gobre sama santa babore. We give you the praise. We give you the glory, Lord. Elia sonte malia kandela borole. In the name of Jesus. Pastor T, what do we have on Saturday? Is there a wedding? It's a wedding on Sunday, Sunday morning. Okay. 
Saturday is free. All right. So do me a favor. Any sick person you find in Makoto, let us meet here on Saturday evening. I use tomorrow to rest to finally recover. Then I'll start prayers from Friday morning till Saturday evening. It's an end of year package. <laughs> Satan will not succeed with your family. In the name of Jesus. Now, bring the young man up. Bring the young man up. Oh. Yes, what's wrong with him? Go to Pastor Tony. You were sold for naught and you shall be bought without money. I call you forth from where you were kept. And I destroy the spirits that bedevil you. The dark power of Satan that spoke through your vocal cord right now, I arrest. And I command you, spirit of darkness, come out of this vessel in the name of Jesus Christ. Let him go. Right now. Remove your chains from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. In Jesus' mighty name. What's wrong with you?